Hi guys, how are we doing? Welcome back to another video. So this is part two or video two or lesson two of me learning microcontrollers. So I've got this board here, which is from Matrix, the company that I now work for. They make these blocks uh, or these boards uh, for learning microcontrollers called eBlocks. So if I show you here, eBlocks, products, eBlocks. So they have a whole bunch of different microcontrollers. Uh, they teach basically uh, PIC microcontrollers, Arduino, AVR, uh, and then there's like ESP32. There's probably one other one I'm missing. There's a Raspberry Pi board, a whole bunch of boards with the main modules. Like there's an ARM processor one as well. And then the smaller downstream modules, which are basically the adapters where you can have a micro bus adapter, a Wi-Fi board, an LCD, a CAN bus module, an Ethernet, etc., etc., etc. So there's it's basically a college kit which is used to teach um, microcontrollers. And so what I'm doing is I'm going through this curriculum that Matrix have, which is 101 pages, and it basically covers a whole bunch of stuff about microcontrollers. And the most important thing that I'm looking to do is learning how to program them. So. I think I've finished section four now, which is programming my first microcontroller. So I did that in the last video. If you haven't seen that, go watch. And I'm now on page 51, I believe. So in the last video, what did we do? Let's open up flow code. I got that. The flow code is Matrix's own IDE, uh, where you can program in flow charts. And what did I do last time? Oh yeah, that was it. I had. Oh yeah, I've, so I've made it so that all the LEDs are on, um, but that's me messing about. Let's open up my code. Eblocks lesson one. We'll save this as lesson two as well. And in the last one, we had that fire alarm system, didn't we? So it was like what they had was five fire alarms or five heat sensors. Here we go. That so was you take in five heat sensors. Oh, you can't see because you got oh, I got that in my way. Hang on, there we go. You take in five um, heat sensors in as inputs which are basically my push buttons these things so basically you're taking my five inputs and then that writes to the five outputs i've now messed up the code so let's just fix it um so that code is correct so i must have just downloaded something else so let's just compile to target and fix this code so what it is is basically when you read the inputs here when i press these push buttons these turn on here there you go so that's all turned off what i will show you is that basically as i'm pressing these the LEDs are turning on, but that's not that's not code. That's basically hardware. I think I'm syncing the LED and it's turning on. And I can show you that because I had a look. If I go onto this combo board, there, when I push that push button there, which is uh, this changing screens is killing me. When I push this push button, PB7 in this case, here, I'm now syncing or I'm turning on that LED. I'm connecting that LED to supply. So when I press it, hardware wise, that LED is always going to turn on when I press it. So that's got nothing to do with software. The software side of this is that when I'm pressing this LED, this one's turning on. And so obviously this one here has nothing to do. Although why is that LED not turning on? So for every reason now, these ones are not turning on, but these are the same. These should be turning on. So that might have something to do. And may maybe they might cover that in a in, the, in one of the next lessons, but I have seen here you got active high polarity. So I don't know what that's referring to. Obviously, active high and active low is when you have to put either a logic one or a logic zero to turn something on. But anyways, we won't worry about that for now. So where did I get to? My this lesson is on example two. So I'm example two, and I'm using loops. So we're going to count sheep badly at first without falling asleep. The plan is straightforward. When a sheep passes through the gate. It breaks the light beam. Um, this sends a pulse to a counting system, which then adds one to the total stored in the system. I actually really appreciate the fact that they're using real examples of like real sensors in the real world, because it's pretty hard when you're learning microcontrollers to imagine what these things on the board on your desk could be used for in the real world. PLCs is kind of a bit easier because you're always working around a big system. But it's a bit hard with microcontrollers. Anyway, so. We want to count sheep passing through. So we will display this total on the LED array. Nice. So we get to actually play with this LED now, which is cool. Uh, the plan seems straightforward, but there will be problems. <laughs> Note that flow code has a beam breaker component based on the collision detector. Although this would do a far better job for now, we detect the light beam interrupt interruption 
using more basic, basic methods. Turn up the flowchart, launch flow code, and start, there's a little typo there, and start a new flowchart. Create the flowchart shown opposite, okay? It contains a loop, calculation, and it contains an input icon and output icon. So, we're going for a loop, port A, we're writing our input to zero. Wait, what? I don't fully understand that, but so port A to zero. How does that make sense? Yeah, that, it won't let me do that. That doesn't make sense. So port A, to, it's, okay, I know why. What he's done is when you drag it in, it's just got zero like that. Yeah, so it looks like that. So, okay, I'll delete my one. Bit weird. Calculation block is there. I guess we do some maths there. And then output right to an output all right that's it cool creating the variable we are going to there we go so yeah i was writing to an old variable called sensor there now i'm going to write to a new variable called, i guess sheep so we are going to create two variables one called sheep and the other called total the sheep variable will show whether a sheep is present or not the total variable will store the no total number of sheep recorded so far click view blah, blah blah project explorer view project explorer view project explorer okay that's gone why is that gone Click on globals button at the top. Oh, okay. Globals. Globals. Yeah, I could do better with reading. <laughs> but it's globals. Project Explorer, which is here. Icons, ports, panels, variables. Yeah, I guess it's just variables. It must have changed. Okay, anyways. Hover over variable in a Project Explorer and add new. You can now see a create new da, 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 sheep, create a new variable. I'm just going to rename this old one that I've got from sensor to sheep. I don't like uppercase because uppercase is just for constants. The so sheep, add new initial value zero. Let's initialize it to zero. Why not? All right. Uh, create a variable, blah, blah, blah. Setting up the calculation. So I'm going to click on the calculation icon. Change the display name to new total. Um, okay. New total. Uh, and then total is equal to total plus. So you just type it like that. Total is equal to total plus sheep. And I guess there's no like semicolons or anything. Okay. We will simulate breaking the light beam using a push switch marked SW0 on port A bit 0. The input properties are set up to store whatever number appears on port A in the variable sheep. Initially that number is 0. When the switch is pressed, the number on port A and the stored in sheet value is one with only one switch. The biggest number we can create on port A is one. When the calculation icon is executed, the number stored in a variable sheep is added to the total variable. Hence, when a sheep breaks the light beam, total is increased by one with no sheep present, total remains unchanged. I'm not sure I've understood what I just read there, but okay. Configuring loop properties. Okay. Double click on the loop icon to open its properties. All right. Um, next to the loop, while statement is a loop control text box. Oh, so am I making a, okay, it's a while loop with a condition, all right. Where you write the loop condition, the program continues looping until this condition is met. Examples of loop conditions, count is equal to 10, count is greater than four, count is equal to preset. In all of these, looping continues as long as the condition in the loop while text box is true. I, okay, I kind of would expect anyone reading this to have done have some programming experience. I wouldn't expect someone to pick up a microcontroller and try to program it for the first time. So you should really understand what loops are. In programming true, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to read all of this. The default condition in the loop whilst is one, blah, blah, blah. Come on. Right click on the input icon and select properties from the menu to see the following dialog box. What did I set loop to? Okay, I think it just wants me to, lo to leave loop as so we leave the while loop as a one. So it wants me to change the input name to check the sensor. Oh, I can't select that, okay. Input there, click that. Check the sensor. Syntax error, I was expecting that, I was surprised. Display name box and type check the sensor. I mean, yeah, you wouldn't expect. That's not a variable name with spaces. So I'm surprised that they've asked you to type that, that's weird. All right. Um, oh, maybe the syntax error is the variable. Okay. Click on the next on the next variable to, uh, and double click and type the word sheep. So maybe it will allow spaces in the name. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Okay. So I'm writing to sheep. 
by default the input is port A, which is what we want. Click on OK. This is all a bit basic. Double click on the total word. So write the total and I guess this needs to be port B. Oh my gosh, this is a bit boring. Alright, click once on the output box and select the LED array. Place it on the system panel by moving. It's too wordy. Alright. So we want eight LEDs on my 2D panel. How do I bring that 2D panel back up again? There we go. Two view D, 2D panel. Bring it up. There we go. So and I want eight LEDs. I guess I want them on port B. Add a single push switch which represents the light beam sensor. So I've got I've got an array there. So get rid of the array. And how do I bring up component inputs? And I just want to switch. Switch 2D. Alright. On the properties pane, click connect on the properties pane connection section. Switch to port A.0. So A. I like this view is interesting. A.0. Which is okay. Click on the text property in the properties pane and replace the default text with light beam interruption. Light beam interruption. You should now have a product that looks like something like this. Okay, so I haven't I don't have that. So where's that? Click on the text property in the properties pane. So he's ah oh, damn. Alright, start again. I can not add a bloody switch. Alright, switch. Drag that on. Make it bigger. So switch push button. I've got the same name as him. So what text has he now adjusted? He's got click on the text property. Oh, select text. Oh that's why. He's dragged on his own text. That seems he should be able to just have his own label like that. Alright, let's just follow it to the T. So we want uh what did he say? Component creation primitives. Creation and then primitives. <laughs> what kind of names are these? Alright, label. That's a 3D one, that ain't gonna work. 2D. Alright, and it won't let me edit it by clicking there, which okay. Light beam interruption. And then what did he do? He made it red. Alright. How comes this one's dark as well? I like dark. Alright, can we move on? This is so dead. Alright, instead of adding text to the text field, within the switch can be changed from switch room to light beam. Change the component label option from same as handle to custom. Oh, okay. So yeah, that, that's what I did originally. Yeah, okay, yeah. Fair enough, yeah. Yeah, I get why you teach like that, that's fine. Run the simulation. Come on, let's do some work. I'm dying here. Alright, so running the simulation. I press the push button. Not turning off. Okay, it turned off. On. On. Okay, I don't know if it's meant to work like this. Like, the push button's on now, but B1. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. So, yeah, we want only the B0 LED to light to show a total of one sheep. The program runs at high speed, however, and so keep cycling through the input and calculation steps. As a result, before you have time to release the push switch, the total has incremented by one several times. This problem is explored in the next section. Yeah, I don't think you. That's not a good way of explaining, like push buttons and cycle times and so how many you you held the button down and it's counted six thousand times in that one second because of its cycle time or whatever. Click, 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 click. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyways, let's just carry on. The solution, adding a delay. The prob the problem, the program runs too fast. Before we have time to release the switch, the program has run through several times and then one to the total each time. We need to slow it down by adding a delay. Uh, move the cursor over the delay icon, drag it onto the main work area and drop it between calculations. So, all right, delay, okay. One millisecond, 2,000 milliseconds. Double click on a delay, blah, blah, blah. Now run. Oh, wait, what? 2000 or 200? 200, sorry. So, what I, yeah, okay. So, what he th reckons now is that this is going to work, but this is like a switch, which I would like. Can we not just get a momentary push button as opposed to one that, like, because there I click it and I move off it and it's still on. I want a, a momentary one. So, what do I need to do? Component libraries, inputs switch there's just a push button 
There's not that many. Okay, so search is really what I want to do. I don't really want to be simulation push switch. That's a 3D one. Yeah, there isn't. There isn't just switch push button. That's what I'm using right now. But I, yeah, I would have liked a momentary one. That's a shame that it doesn't have that. So if I run it, press it. I'm clicking it. It's not registering my click. Like there, I just didn't register it. Uh, I must say, I don't fully understand what's happening here, but okay. It's a hell of a lot of words. So I'm kind of like lost in all the words. And I've forgotten what we're doing. Apparently, this sensor means that a sheep's gone by. Why is that LED turning on? I don't know. That, I, I haven't seen his result. I'm confused, really. Setting the output. I mean, I, obviously, I'm, I'm hardly reading the text, so I don't really... I probably miss out steps, but like there, I'm writing my total to port B. That's what I'm doing. If my total... Do I want to be only writing to just a single bit? Bit zero of port B instead? Like, why... Why are we writing to just port B? But even still, B1's turning on. I don't understand that. So let's run it. Let's build it to the actual device. And I'm assuming the simulation is going to... Well, okay. Well, we can do away with... We'll build it to the, the actual hardware and use the actual hardware. And let's see what happens. But so far, this is not a great lesson for me. I'm pretty lost. It started off well with like a realistic scenario, but... I'm a bit, yeah. All right, so that's... Compiled, can we close automatically, please? So if I now press that, nothing happens. But well, it does. Wait, what? Reset, please. Okay. Wait, what? Why is that just, why is that input on? Reset. That input goes on automatically when I reset. All right. I'm going to press it. Nothing. Press that. Nothing, 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 nothing. And then what's that doing? All right, think, Hamid. So, on port A, confusing that it's called check the sensor instead of input as well. I'm going to change this back to input because, I mean, why, are the, why is the input and output shape the same? So, input, I'm reading port A, or why is it the same color? Port A, which is this whole port here, all eight bits of it get written to the sheep variable. So, if I press this one now, on I write in like, 32 do it so yeah I d yeah woo, 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 woo. this is where you guys are gonna say hamid you just retarded i apologize reading instructions just does doesn't go well for me i'm more of a video type of person but anyways and what these the examples finished this program shows the total look there's a note at the end which i didn't read this program shows the total number of sheep in binary format so wait hang on go back to that then the total number of sheep is is one that's not true though right like, there should be loads of sheep now. Or did I? Okay, wait, wait, wait. I changed this, didn't I? I messed this up. No, I didn't. Entire port. Single bit. Okay, entire port. Okay, build that again. Let's see if we can make this make sense. So, if that is the case, that when I first press that switch, that turns on, I'm okay with that. If it turns on by itself, then that doesn't make sense because I have zero sheep right now. Correct? Do you guys agree with me? What the hell? I've got tons of sheep now. I've got like 80 sheep or something. Why? What is going on? I don't even, I don't understand at all. Okay, well, so there we're counting. <laughs> I like that, that's cool. And I guess I could just hold it. Yeah, so if I just hold it, it's just counting on that 200 millisecond cycle time. I love that though. So why is it that when I reset it though, is there some sort of memory? I mean, if I reset the microcontroller, does the the sheep variable where's where's my variables gone? Sheep variable does that not have a start value? Edit the byte initial value of zero. So what when I reset the microcontroller? How that's the reset pin? Okay, I'll just I'll just take the power out. Better not boot back up with any numbers there now. All right, I'm happy with that. So, press one. One. Press two. Eight. eight. It didn't do it. Why didn't that go to two? Two. Three. Four. 
four, come on, where's five? Five, six, seven, eight. I must say, I do like, I like the look of the binary counter. That's cool. That just looks cool. So, all right, what am I okay with? I'm not okay with the fact that when I hit the reset button, it stores that. That's surprising to me. But okay, I can, I can, I can get on board with that. I can, I can believe that. Do I understand this code? That's another question. So when we start the program, we write the value of our push button to sheep. So if it's zero, we're writing sheep to zero. Then we add zero to the total number of sheep we had, which, you know, could be zero. Oh, so does my total variable not have a start value? The initial value of zero. Unless there's some sort of like retentive memory sort of thing. But anyways, okay. So when the program starts, I'll plug it in there. All right, so when the program starts, my sheep counter is at zero. Yep. And I pressed that one. Did it miss it? So where I pressed it there now, and oh, you, you missed it as well because I didn't have my camera on. So I, I'll press it and it didn't, it didn't count. Is that because of the 200 millisecond delay? If I hold it for 200 milliseconds, it catches it, but it catches a lot of it. So you can see what I'm saying. That this LED is, is a hardware thing. So you can see it's registering my input, but not necessarily into the microcontroller. Like there, it just missed four pre button presses. I'm assuming it's because of the delay, because when you put a microcontroller to to delay or sleep it ain't counting your input right so that's probably just bad code but obviously this is for kids i'm okay with that lesson i think i think it was a difficult lesson for me to get through but that might be that might say more about me than anything else but all right let's wrap this video up that was a fun one i enjoyed that the counting sheep one was a bit yeah but yeah I, I do like the fact that it counted up and binary actually that was pretty cool so yeah, alright anyways, thanks for watching and I shall see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.